here we go. I used to love going in abandoned buildings when I was a kid. There was a house by me nicknamed Ghost House because construction was never finished on it for the longest time, and it had been sitting vacant and unfinished for years. It was on an already kind of sketchy block with a lot of houses that appear to be either vacant or the owners of the houses just don't care about their properties because there's a lot of overgrown grass and weeds. My friends Jenny, Luca, Kylie, and I were bored just driving around town late one night. We got some fast food. Then Luca floated the idea of checking out the ghost house. Like actually checking it out, going inside. The girls were on board. All right, can so we just walk around outside? So was I too then. We parked a few houses down. This street only had one street light. The rest of it was dark. Of and course. A lot of the houses didn't have any lights on. So it really was a dark and kind of creepy block. I mean, I'm uh, living in the south. You see that a lot. I mean, you see that up north, too. I mean, in rural areas where it's uh, especially in areas where they trying to cut costs. So they had like one street light. Cause it used to be actually on my street it uh years ago it used to be um it was one it was well, it was one light one house over from me going that way and then it wasn't another street light until you got all the way down the street where it like bends at coming onto my street and it was one it was, and it, plus the lights were like always they were like Damn, they had never been. I don't know when the last time they been, they were serviced, but <laughs> I didn't even notice it. I guess they did it one day. I wasn't here or something, and they put LED lights and and re and uh, I don't know. If they just painted the pole or what? It kind of looks new, but it could. Like I said, it could just be paint. And um, they put LED lights and they put another street light in the middle, so it's the one right where the, the road bends and then about another 30 feet I, I would say well I won't say 30 feet just say about 3 houses away it's another light and then another like 4 houses it's this light and then they put another one down by the uh, another one at the bend because the, the road comes in like this and then bends going out like that at the bend that way they put another one and then they put more lights because it's a park down the street from me and they put more lights so they come before it was just pitch black at night so <laughs> if you wanted to play over there at night and apparently you can cut the lights on and off over there but they're so bright and there's a house right there I don't think people would like that but yeah do you see but in Mississippi shit, you'd be walking on those dark roads pitch black I one time I walked over those roads. I was staying at uh, a friend of my house. I, I, well, they were, they were a friend, but we were cousins actually. And um, we were staying at a house like out of town from where we live. And he was, oh, let's go walk down to one of his friends' house. Mind you, it was like ten o'clock at night. I think it was like eleven or something like that, maybe ten or eleven. Walk. We walked out. <laughs> that was the first time I actually walked out. I was outside of town at night like that, other than being inside of a car, but walking down the the, the highway, and the road was pitch black. It was no moon now, but you could see the you know the stars and stuff. It was pitch black, and he brought he he brought a couple flashlights, gave me one, so he just walked. That way, no cars, they the cars would see us before they got right up on us, and because something not everybody had like they brights on on those roads. Which normally you do, and then you see another car, you cut it off. But that was like pitch black walking out of the road. Like you couldn't even. I don't even know how people, because I've driven down those roads at night, and I've seen driven past people walking, and I'm like, how are you walking? It's pitch black out here. You walking, and and you don't see a light until you get to each house, and then each house is spaced out for like five six miles and then depending on how big their property is it could be even further and then their house is sitting off the road <laughs> like like a, probably a, like a quarter of a mile maybe not even that far like maybe like 50 yards or something like that 
because a lot of houses, especially in, in, in the South, they house like off the road. Uh, and then you, and they, they, and they might have a, a light on or they have like motion to take the lights, but they, you too far away to set them up. But I was like, I don't know. That was so scary. <laughs> it was like, it is pit. Even though we had flashlight and it was just woods, like all the way up to the road next to us. I was like, I hated that. Like I said, the neighboring houses seemed abandoned too, even though they weren't due to cars being in some of the driveways. We were all sure to be extra oh, quiet getting I'll start out of the car and walking over to the ghost house. I'm static in my ears. This two-story house in the dead of night gave off eerie vibes for sure. Next up, we had to figure out a way in. Of course, we tried the front door and it was locked. We then walked around the house trying every I'd be window, more so worried about getting tetanus. Right Jenny was the smallest, then being, so she uh, seeing a the ghost. window and then went to unlock the back door for us. Only it was already unlocked, mm -hmm. meaning anyone could have just walked right in. We entered the house that smelled like a mix of wood and some kind of rotten cat piss kind of smell. The first floor was a lot more finished than I was expecting. So just cat piss. It was pretty big with lots of rooms, but there was no furniture. We kind of all split up going different ways. I went up the stairs to the second floor. And up here was a bit more unfinished, with a lot of the wall framing exposed. I heard rustling around from downstairs, the sounds of my friends being a bit too loud. So I went shh, really loud down the stairs. Upstairs was pretty empty, so it's I went back down to run into Jenny, who asked what's upstairs. I said it's a bit unfinished up there. She then proceeded to go upstairs and check it out anyway. I proceeded to look for the basement, and I found it beyond a brown door right under the stairs leading upstairs. As soon as I opened it, I got a whiff of that cat piss type smell I was talking about. I started walking down the steps, and as I got to the bottom, I could see the basement looked a little more decrepit than the rest of the house. The concrete floor was stained with some brownish, rusty looking material. My first instinct was to think paint, but the color could also match blood. I looked around the mostly empty space, and found in one corner a small wooden chair and a little table with a book on it. It was the Holy Bible. I heard footsteps coming down the steps. <laughs> okay. I said in a volume slightly above a whisper. And there was a pentagram and next to it. Out. When I heard no response, I turned around but didn't see anyone by the stairs. I said, who's there? Then I noticed a girl sitting down, leaning on the wall. Oh, hell no. It took me a second to realize it wasn't Jenny or Kylie. It was some random woman with extremely long and messy hair looking right at me. Come check this out. And I heard one of the girls upstairs screaming. Followed by Luca calling my name saying, let's get out of here. The only words I could muster up were, holy shit. And I ran out of the basement and up the stairs. <laughs> holy I shit. I saw my friends running out through the back door. I had no idea what they had seen, but I was right behind them. We ran back out. Then a hand grabbed my shoulder. Didn't stop until we were in. I asked them as we started to drive away what they saw, because I saw some deranged looking woman come down to the basement. Everyone was talking over each other. But one of the girls finally managed to explain that they saw two men standing in one of the empty rooms on the first floor. Oh, boy. They saw some dark objects on the floor in that room, but they couldn't find out what they were in those brief seconds before running away. They didn't get a look at their faces, but they were men based on their statures. I don't know what the hell was going on in that house, and if we ran into some satanic cult, or if we just ran into some homeless people. Probably just couldn't homeless people. to ever go back to that house again. I don't live in that town or state anymore, so I don't know what became of that house. But based on the most recent Google Maps picture from 2019, it still wasn't ever finished. Because, I mean, when I was really young, like, living in Chicago, he's going, like, in abandoned buildings, uh, abandoned houses. You never, you, I mean, you always, it's more so worried about, like, homeless people because they're usually very defensive because they're afraid somebody's coming to attack them or try to take their stuff which other homeless people were doing and you had people beating up that happened not that long ago here somebody beat up like some homeless person just at, at night just going around just beating up I guess homeless people and uh getting they fucking rocks off and, and, and of course they're gonna automatically be defensive they're like I know who you are and, and, and you coming in here and you're like they probably look at you like you don't look homeless like I said you ain't come here shelter and then if you did they're like this is my place you know find your own place so they're probably just homeless people I'm like i know you found a bible but maybe it's a religious homeless person 
it is a little weird that somebody said, "Hey, hey, come check this out," and he turned around and it's a, a, a fly. It's a um, it's a, a homeless. <laughs> it was a woman looking to shovel. So I was like, "That's unsettling." Is that a fly? Or is that a spider? Cause I didn't see it coming down on the web or nothing. Cause there was a spider in here, and I killed it. I was like, we're usually when there's one, there's more. My friends and I live in a very nice area. Try and picture the quintessential suburban neighborhood. It's relatively quiet, and people are used to the secluded, isolated so feeling in Mayberry. The last place you'd expect anything dangerous to really happen. With the exception of what I'm about to tell in you, in a place where people leave their doors the unlocked, silence you'd eventually come to crave. Like idiots. This happened a few summers ago, and as much as I try to resist it, I will never be able to erase the memory from my mind. Anyway, my friend Chaz and I had always been those kids to try to cause trouble wherever we could. Looking back. I struggled to justify our behavior. I guess it was our teenage manifestation of a rebellious spirit or some shit like that. We lived on the same street and hung out after school every single day. Because our neighborhood consisted of nothing but very large houses and towering trees, we didn't usually have much to do on weekdays, unless we wanted to journey a few towns over. So we ended up making our own fun most of the time. In our neighborhood, there was a well-known mansion at the top of a hill that had been abandoned for as long as people could remember. It wasn't really special. Every kid who lived in my town had been inside. The rooms were essentially stripped of anything of value, and finding a wall that wasn't coated with multiple layers of spray paint was almost impossible. <laughs> it was especially creepy because it stood at the edge of a massive cemetery. Oh, for Chaz and I, this cemetery mansion was a kind of default. I think, I think this doesn't bother me anymore. Because I went, like, always, it, the house was next to a cemetery. Because when I was in the fourth, fifth, and sixth grade, uh, I lived in an apartment complex that literally was surrounded by cemeteries. It was, it was a cemetery in front of us. I think, I, I'm pretty sure I've said this before. But it was a cemetery in front of us. And then it was an intersection further down. It was a cemetery on the other side of that. It was a... It was like a stone factory or something like that, that that made like granite and like core slabs and stuff. But they also made tombstones because they had them like in the area too, like set up like to, I guess tombstone people would just come by. And then on the other side, and it was a street on that side because there was an intersection. And on the other side of that was another cemetery. And those cemeteries was huge. I think my. I think I, because we, we were driving, I was like, this place looks familiar. Uh, oh, it is, it's a fucking moth in here. It's up here. I ain't, I ain't, I'm not about to try to catch it. But yeah, I hope I didn't fuck up something because I know I hit this mic <laughs> and it's been acting up and like try to disconnect. It didn't, it didn't, I didn't hear anything disconnect because it's, it's a USB port, so I would have heard it disconnect. Um, but yeah, it was that doesn't scare me. You know, if anything I thought it was cool because when it was it was a full moon like like this. And I remember once, what well, has happened actually a f quite a few times over there, but it was one particular time. <laughs> it was like a bright full moon. I was standing out on a balcony and it was just like a mist over the cemetery. And I think I remember that that particular night more because I was watching. It was, I was, it was like, I know it was happy close to Halloween because it was like a marathon of different, it's like, Halloween movies on that they had Halloween they were trying to marathon of that uh, I think I think at that point they were only up to Halloween 5 but they hadn't made the other ones this, yeah, this was like in the 90s like late 90s 
So, and then, you know, like Friday the 13th. And I think at the time I was watching Return of the Living Dead. I think I was watching that when when I went outside and I, I just have it. I was like, huh, it's a, like a mist. It's just like probably like about a foot off the ground and the moon was full and it was like clouds kind of going over it and like, you know, going past it. <laughs> it's like, oh, and then my, my mind was playing tricks. So I was like, that, that's somebody, somebody walking. <laughs> I think I see somebody walking. <laughs> oh, my little child mind. A plan B, if we will. We had nothing else to do. We throw some graffiti up inside her, just smoke and chill on the roof. This was one of those nights. It was like 3 a.m. on a Wednesday, and Chaz and I had just been flaked on by a couple girls that we made plans with. The two of us were kind of upset, so we figured chucking rocks at the cemetery mansion would be a decent way to release some energy. Release some stress. Had we been sober, we might have been more cautious about doing something so stupid. But it was late, it was summer, and we didn't care. I convinced Chaz not to drive. And we were done. More than a little kids. drunk. And after about a 20 minute walk, we crested the hill and were met with a familiar yet eerie sight. Vines twisting and hanging down the muddy bricks. Most of the windows Close shattered. Close that window and I'm just points starting at the tip to of the sweat roof. now. Definitely a sinister feel, especially at such an ungodly hour of the night. Without warning, Chaz picked up a stone and chucked it towards the house. It sailed gracefully before smashing through one of the fourth floor windows. It was difficult to confirm in the low light of the moon and surrounding streetlights, but the deafening sound of the shattering glass confirmed it. Gleefully, I picked up a rock and did the same, puncturing one of the second floor windows. Before the mansion's fourth floor, there was a single small there's window, still windows probably there. an attic, that stood lonely as the highest room in the house. Chaz challenged me to hit it. I missed a good ten throws before giving up with an aggravated sigh. Chaz grinned, picked up a rock, and said, watch this. He took a long look at the tiny target and launched it. I watched in awe as the rock flew through the air, shattering the attic window with a satisfying crash. I was shocked. The two of us stood there for a second, admiring what just happened. Chaz was about to pick up another rock, when I, still looking at the shattered window, saw a dark object fly out of the emptiness and sail down towards us. I literally jumped, confused as to what I just saw. Chaz and I looked down at the rock that had just landed on the gravel in front of us. The exact same rock Chaz had just thrown. It was easily recognizable, as it had a sort of Z imprint on one of the faces. The two of us stood there in silence, obviously a little shaken up. I'm like, Shit. It was really late for other kids to be doing the same thing we were, but that was the only explanation we could come up with. We agreed that it must have been a group of teenagers well, trying to mess with us. An idea that actually excited us. The devious grins on our faces told the story. Don't go in. We we're going to try and get the jump on them before they could scare us. Oh. The two of us quietly made our way to the front door, ducking under a thick vine that hung from the towering pillars above. The door was slightly ajar, but it always was. It had long since been misaligned from its hinges and didn't close properly. As quietly as we could, we stepped inside, our eyes adjusting to the minimal light and our noses to the smell of mildew and rotting wood. We slowly made our way up the creepy Mold stairs, unable to silence the sound of shifting wood beneath our feet. We had made it to the fourth floor and were positioned at the base of the final staircase. Interestingly, we had never been up there. The entrance to the roof was on the opposite side of the house, and this room must have eluded us. Chaz took the lead, and I followed directly behind. The staircase led to a small wooden door, which we presumed was the attic door. Chaz put a hand on the doorknob, and even looked back at me. I nodded, and in one fluid motion, he flung the door open. Before I could even see anything, I was struck by the smell that made me take a few reactionary steps backward. It was disgusting. Mm -mm. It smelled like death and mm -hmm. rot. Dead body. Something was clearly decaying in that Boy, room. Dead animal. Chaz covered his nose and entered. I was a little why, more hesitant like, to do why so. Are going in this? I decided that I'd rather be by his side than alone on a pitch black staircase. The sight was even Wait, worse. If, if I smelled that, I'm like, there is no way that somebody is in this room like hiding from us like some other teenagers in this room that smells like death like why would i wouldn't go in there i'm like okay they can't be in here if, if i did go in the house i'm not i get it that they bored and frustrated because they couldn't get no nookie but and they teenagers too so you know i mean i was a teenager once i didn't 
I didn't always think things through, but I wouldn't. I know, know myself back then. I wouldn't have done this shit at at that age. Like, like maybe if I was like thirteen, fourteen, but if I was like sixteen, seventeen, like no, I'm, I'm good. And the smell. <laughs> we found ourselves. That's how you get tetanus. Room, like I said, the floor of which a white. <laughs> he had no health insurance. Out. There were a few unlit candles in a closet door that we didn't open. The smell seemed to be emanating from that closet, and I was worried Chaz would want to investigate more. To our surprise, the room was void of people. I had enough, though. This was really starting to freak me out, and I couldn't find had enough to leave now. any longer. I turned towards the door, and that's when I saw it. I looked down the staircase and saw two cloaked figures looking back up at me. I cursed and ran towards Chaz. Just then, we heard stomping up the stairs from behind us. SCP? Uh, the stairway? As the stomping got closer Shit, to the door, jump out I was that prepared window. to fend off whoever it was, bracing myself for a fight. Just then, Chaz yelled at me, dude, come on. I whipped around to see Chaz halfway out of the shattered window, presumably stepping on the roof. I hurriedly did the same, and the second I made it onto the roof, I heard the door forcefully open. We ran across the roof Shit. to the entrance we knew about, not wanting to wait to see if we were being followed. Had this situation He's not like, dude, been so dire, That's right. I don't know if I would have been able to go through with our plan. The darkness made it nearly impossible to see. One wrong step, and we would have been sent tumbling to our deaths. Damn, is that close how? Behind Chaz, yeah, I guess. And we made it to the roof entrance. It was a little hatch that led to a ladder. Chaz failed to open the hatch up. It was locked from the inside. And just then, we heard a booming voice ring out from somewhere in the distance. They went that way, yelled a freakishly deep voice. To this day, it was the scariest thing I've ever heard chasing anyone say. For? Without thinking... I stomped on the hatch as hard as I could with my right foot, and it gave way in a crash loud enough to reveal our position to anyone in the house, let alone someone chasing us on the roof. They fucked that. The force Ain't of no the point impact caused me to fall into the hole, and had it not been for my hands reflexively grabbing the ladder, I wouldn't have been seriously hurt. Chaz screamed at me to go, so I climbed down as fast as I could, trying to ignore the pain in my leg. The two of us sprinted down the other staircase and burst out the back door, jumping the fence and running into the cemetery. Chaz seemed to be fine. He was literally laughing. I, on the other hand, was so scared what? I could barely think. Well, maybe he does his response to him being scared. Chaz and I maintained a watchful eye on the mansion, half expecting someone to be following us. We waited. And just when we thought the coast was clear, we saw a group of four or five cloaked figures circling the property, frantically searching under bushes and trees. The two of us crept closer into the cemetery, until we were sure there was no chance we could be spotted in the darkness. We hopped the backside fence and haven't been back to that house since. I can only I assume hope. that we stumbled upon some kind of cult meeting or ritual. Why they decided to do it in an abandoned house is something why I still you, ask myself. Why did you jump to that conclusion that it was a, a, a cult meeting or ritual? Just because they looked like they were in cloaks? Like, it was dark. Like, this was the year 2017. They must have been Satan. Satan. Satan is something. <laughs> Towards the end of our pledge process, our entire pledge class took a trip to an abandoned hospital a few towns Could over. Could have just been criminals. It was a sort of tradition that each pledge class would do. I carpooled with a few of my pledge brothers. There's honestly just too many names to list, so I'll just name my pledge brother that I spent most of the night with, Joshua. Joshua and I and a couple others carpooled to the hospital, which sat next to a big park. So all of us parked in one of the parking lots in the park. We waited till everyone was there, then started walking down a pathway in the direction of the hospital, until the pathway cut right, and at this point we had to walk through the small patch of wood separating the park from the hospital. I honestly wore the wrong shoes for this. I was complaining about wearing my white Air Force Ones. Oh yeah, After you definitely wore the wrong woods, shoes, buddy. We got to the property of the hospital, surrounded by trees and a parking lot on all sides. Seeing such a tall building, once full of people and lights, standing completely dark in the night, was really creepy. It was my first time ever exploring this building. A couple of the guys in the group knew the secret ways in, one of which being simply climbing through one of the lower windows that was smashed through. I followed close to the back of the group. One by one, we stepped down through this window, leading to a level beneath the ground. The floor on this level was wet, making me really regret my shoe choice now. Joshua and I stayed in the back, following behind the rest. There were like ten of us, so being in such a large group took away most of the scariness of being in a place like this. We went up the stairs. Everyone's steps echoed through the building. We traversed the creepy hallways that had been abandoned for decades. The walls surprisingly not littered with graffiti. 
James, one of the guys who was very experienced with this place, said not a lot of people break in because no one thinks to cut through the park to avoid the security in front of the parking lot. Eventually, the group started to split up a little bit. A small group of guys went this way, a small group of guys went that way. We were on, I think, the second floor, when Joshua and I decided to go I down the separate hallway for. slash corridor. Some of the rooms in this place seemed like they hadn't even been gone through since the place closed down. Others looked like they'd been rummaged through and had small amounts of graffiti in them. Joshua and I were in a hospital room with the bed and medical equipment still in there when we heard someone walk past the doorway to the room. We both turned and caught just a glimpse of a black shadow walking past the door out of view. We both looked at each other oh. and said, Yo, who is that? I walked into the hall, and at the end of it, I saw someone standing there. I couldn't tell if they were facing me or facing the wall. All I saw was their body. I said, Who is that? Then whoever it was walked into the room next to them. Joshua came into the corridor now and was confused at what I saw. I told him someone was here and we should just go back to the group. We left down the opposite direction. No, I was back surprised. He oh, don't worry. We eventually about it. started to hear the echoing voices of our pled brothers. As we were getting closer, all of a sudden, there was an almost deafeningly loud, blood curdling scream of a woman coming from the direction we just came from. If I had to describe the screams, it sounded like a woman being brutally stabbed to death. I noticed the sounds of our Pledge Brothers went silent now, or maybe the screams just overpowered the sounds of their voices. We ran back towards our friends and screamed, Go! All of us ran back downstairs to the lower level where we entered from. Somehow I found myself in the back of the group again. One by one, <laughs> we all crawled out from that window. Oh, it's not some grammar. Screaming stopped, but now we heard footsteps stomping down the stairs. They weren't the footsteps of anyone in our group. I'm screaming, Go! Hurry up! Finally, after Joshua crawled out, I crawled out. The whole time fearing someone would grab my feet, we booked it back towards the cars through the woods. After we got to the cars and caught our breath, I told everyone I saw a person in the corridor where Joshua and I were. That's where the screams were coming from. We all left shortly after that, definitely freaked out. I'm not really interested in urban exploration anymore. <laughs> well, you got a nice little story out of it. That probably was somebody just fucking with you. Oh, oh, oh. The hell? That frame rate was like at 11. <laughs> it was like 11 frames per second. Like shit. Sheesh. <laughs> but, um. Yeah, that reminds me of. I remember someone told me they, that they was going into like a abandoned building before and they said something about like someone was chasing them they, they heard footsteps cause they were I guess they were in there being loud I don't know what they were doing but they heard footsteps coming down the stairs and they were running out and when they turned around when they ran out of the building turned around it was just a bunch of teenagers like <laughs> laughing at them cause they got scared and chased them out I was like I was like well hey at least they were teenagers because like well, this thing if you turned around and they were like grown ass men or women like ch chasing <laughs> that you you like a kid well i think he said he was in middle school when that happened but uh like that is especially especially when you gotta wait for somebody to get through like crawl through a hole or a uh, opening because yeah, y'all have to go in one by one to get out and you like, oh my God, hurry up. Like, just, you just want to just die. die. <laughs> just, just, just get, get out of there. That's why I never, I never like things like that where you got to go through windows or something like that. Like, just, if it's a door, it, that's easy. You all can just run out the door it, it quickly. You ain't got to climb up no, on nothing, climb over nothing. That is one, I don't think I ever, no, I didn't. No, I think about it. I never went in any abandoned building that had like a fence around. Cause one thing I ain't not climb no fence, cause a lot of them fences were like I don't know, them things like twenty feet high. Some of the, them big tall fences, like you know them construction fences, like, like they getting ready to tear down the building. Except them 
fences would be up there for years. <laughs> and I was like, I ain't climbing that shit. We're trying to like crawl through uh, the the log part to try to stretch, especially when they be up there for years. Like that chain, I don't know if it gets, I don't know what. Sometimes they be like, you can able, I don't know if you able to stretch it from time or what. Time passes and the chain gets looser. I don't know, but I was, I ain't, I ain't, if it's if it's closed in like that, like if we can just open the door, or because I remember, uh, there was one place when we was able to kick the door open. It was like a, the door you could tell it was like an old wooden door it wasn't that thick and we just we were like me and my friend was just kicking it. <laughs> we just sitting there both kicking it and then with my other friend he's like move out the way he ran and like ran and did like a hard like front kick, front like thrust kick into it. and I, I remember the door still didn't move <laughs> and then all three of us just sitting there just kicking it and I'm, I'm on I remember I was on like the right so I'm trying to kick with my left leg, which is my, it's my, my weaker leg. So I'm, I'm right-handed, so I was like, but we ended up getting it and going, and it was, it was, it was fine. It was just a band that plays, because they had boarded up. We had been in there before, but they had, the thing was when we was kicking it, kicking the door open, some, I, I guess they had, I guess, because I'm trying to remember, like the way the, the door was, the door was closed. And look like they had put like a, because you know they put like little thin pieces of wood in like windows, because they don't want you know people to look in there or whatever. They had like put that up against the door, over the door, and I guess nailed it or to the wall or something. But we were able to kick the and I but it had the that thing it had been there I guess because we hadn't been in there. And I think at that point it had been there like a year. And went over them because we were kicking it. It looked like it was broken a little bit because we kicked the door. It like broke because the, the door had broke too, and like what what where the lock was at that broke, and uh, the wood had broke, like yeah, broken open and like broken apart from where the wall was at. I remember when we walked back through there. One of my friends caught his sleeve and it ripped his like piece of his sleeve on his mom. I think she whooped his ass. I'm not <laughs> because he, he, because I think that he just said about some new shirt or something. I said, like, "Why would you?" I'm thinking, "Why would you wear like new clothes?" And you he knew we were doing this, but uh, yeah. Anyway, hope you enjoyed my reaction. One, if you did, make sure you hit that thumbs up button down below. Make sure to subscribe if you're new here. Hit that bell if you want to be notified when I upload new videos. Comment down below. Share this video. I'll see you next time. Peace.